The Vice President, Kashim Shatima, has assured that the federal government will probe the error bombing by the Nigerian army that occurred at Tundum Birin village in Igabi local government area of Kaduna state and punish anyone found culpable. He also pledged that the victims of the incident will be supported by the federal government. The vice president gave the assurance when he visited the victims of the attack at the Barrow Deco Teaching Hospital in Kaduna State. He also assured that the federal government under President Bola Tinubu is committed to the total eradication of terrorism and banditry in the northern region and other parts of the country. The Vice President's condolence visit comes four days after the deadly earth strike that killed over 85 persons and injured several others in the northwestern state. The victims will be taken care of under the canopy of the Polaku Initiative. We will commence work by next month and that community will be the first community to be rebuilt in the northwest sub region. All measures will be taken to ensure that future occurrences are abated. And most importantly, the government will go to the root of the issue and if anyone is found culpable will be punished accordingly. Thank you. The Naira scarcity that is far becoming a major concern for Nigerians is, is disrupting business activities in parts of the Federal Capital Territory as the central bank continues to reassure citizens of adequate supply. POS operators who can now play a significant role in the supply chain say uncertainty in the system is worsening the situation leading to more shortages of the Naira in circulation. Zainab Kayare has more. While most residents who spoke to Trust TV say the situation is not severe in the FCT, it is beginning to look like a long-term challenge as they experience restrictions when trying to get access to cash either through the banks or point-of-sale operators. Of course, as I am right now, I'm very, very angry. I just went to my bank this morning. I wanted to withdraw about 40,000 naira, and they are giving me 5,000 naira, And I need like that 40,000 to use it for something. So I talked to the bank manager and he was telling me that there is nothing they can do. It's only 5,000 that they are giving. No matter how electronic we may try to go, cash is still very, very important. Because you can go to a petty trader and say, I want to make a transfer of 200 naira or 300 naira to you. They won't take it. Even transporters. Transporters that were paying 500, 1,000, they don't take transfer. You have to give them cash. Since last week now, we've been experiencing cashless. So we'll go to the bank to get money for the business. They'll say that there's no cash. The next day we'll go back. they say that they cannot give more than 150 and all those, you know. So we'll be stressing ourselves, going to towns, but still yet. For POS operators in the FCT, they are compelled to ration the limited cash and supply to maximize their business operations, adding that charges for transactions have not been affected by the narrow scarcity. Like this morning, I went to a POS merchant to get cash and not only me, others. So the guy was telling us that banks are not dispensing, so I don't really know what's going on. I feel like it's because these banks, sometimes they are not reliable. Sometimes when you want to make transfer, you see that it's, it's unsuccessful and they don't, you know, retrieve it or return it to you till like days later. Many Nigerians remain concerned but optimistic ahead of the Yuletide season, with many expecting the CBN to address the factors responsible for the Naira scarcity. Zainab Garai, Trust TV News, Abuja. Nigeria's economy is experiencing a sluggish recovery as the government struggles to keep millions of small-scale businesses in operation under the current climate. Uh, the government is now calling on marketing and communications professionals to serve as catalyst for socio-economic transformation of the country as it targets one million small businesses for empowerment. Trustee Vish Shafiyo Suleiman reports. As Nigeria's federal government continues to troubleshoot the economy, this gathering presents an opportunity to deliberate on critical issues that will add value to national discourse. Represented by the Director General National Orientation Agency, Lare Isa Onilu, the minister highlighted reforms aimed at encouraging and strengthening small and medium enterprises in the country by the Bola Tinubu administration, 
which he says requires support of the marketing communications professionals to succeed. We need your creative solutions and approaches. We need your unparalleled network. We need your platform. This is not about propaganda or noise making. No, instead, it is about enlightenment, sensitization, about opening the eyes of Nigerians to see the various economic opportunities emerging around them. Economic experts who spoke on the theme of the conference, marketing communications as an enabler for national transformation, identified Mr. Links in the government fiscal governance trajectory needed to achieving the objectives of transforming the business environment. When we ask the Nigerian people, what would the government do to make you change your mind and think differently about your country? The individual said, they take care of us from education and health care. Just imagine that. It's impossible to carry society along to, and say, bite the bullets, make the difficult sacrifices, and they see their leaders still you know, on um, spending sprees that reflect that there is no sensibility to how people feel and what people are going through. While acknowledging some early signs of economic recovery, the panelists prepared solutions that could supercharge Nigeria's sluggish economic growth. If you spend 500 billion and you say you are going to alleviate my suffering, and I want to ask who did you give? You can't tell me who did, how you identify the poor. You can't tell me the poor you alleviated their suffering. And if we ask the poor, raise your hand that you have been alleviated to a small degree. Everybody's hands are down. Then you create a complex situation where there is no ethos. And the Nigeria we want is the Nigeria where economic reforms are people-centered. When they come with pains, we must react very quickly and show empathy for our people. The conference is coming on the heels of ambitious trillion dollar economy target of the President Bola Tinubu administration, anchored on ensuring macroeconomic stability, enhanced food security, jobs creation, improved investments in social security, amongst others, which experts say can only be realized through fiscal financial discipline and accountability in governance. Shapiro Suleiman, Trust TV News, Abuja. And three operatives of the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency have been injured with one left in critical condition after sustaining a gunshot injury to his head. The incident happened in the early hours of Monday, the 4th of December, during an operation at Opuje Forest in Edo State. The affected officers were rushed to the hospital for treatment, while the critically injured personnel had a major surgery on Wednesday. And some of the vehicles used for the operation were riddled with bullets, following credible intelligence that drug cartels had again stocked their warehouses in the forest to start distribution of the psychoactive substance to various parts of the country ahead of the yuletide season. Teams of the NDLEA officers were mobilized to enter the Edo forest and block the distribution of the illicit drug by destroying their warehouses. Director, media and advocacy of NDLEA Femi Baba Femi on Thursday stated that some of the warehouses containing about 6,000 cages of cannabis were first taken down at Ugoba Forest in a Shang West local government area last weekend. The NDLEA teams, however, came under gunfire attack in the early hours of Monday, the 4th of December, when they approached the Opuje Forest after the armed hoodlums had blocked all access roads in the community. The Zamfara state government says it has recovered about 50 operational vehicles allegedly taken away by the immediate past governor of the state, Bello Matawale. 
And briefing journalist on Thursday in Gusau, a spokesperson for Governor Dauda Lawal, Sani Sambo, said the action followed the judgment by the Federal High Court in Sokoto last Friday. And he said due process was carefully followed to recover the vehicles from the Gusau and Maradun residences of the former governor, who earlier denied having possession of any government properties when he was leaving office as governor. And when Lawal took over power as governor of Zamfara State on the 29th of May 2023, controversy over stolen operational vehicles at the government house Gusau, as well as siphoning of public funds set in. Security agencies later raided the two residences of Matawale in Gusau and Maradun local government areas where some vehicles were recovered. The former governor quickly secured a court order restraining the state government from such action pending the determination of the court's decision on the matter. According to the state government, the court in Sokoto dismissed the former governor's suit against it. A forum of Fed Republic federal legislators have called on the National Assembly to offset the salaries and allowances of its members. And this is coming on the heels of the ongoing public hearing by committees of the National Assembly on the 2024 Appropriations Bill. The report. In 1992, through option A4, more than 500 Nigerians were elected into the two chambers of the National Assembly. But their four-year tenure was truncated after spending about nine months in office. 31 years later, some of the former lawmakers are drawing the attention of the government to the unpaid salaries and allowances owed them. Uh, you should do the work. On the strength of one of the forum's members, who is still a servant federal lawmaker, Fred Agbedi, the group is in the National Assembly to restate the demand for the payment of their entitlements. They also call on President Bola Tinubu and the leadership of the National Assembly to intervene. Our problem is one they claim by my, my legal advisor, I've already said it. <coughs> to honor this man that had been struggling to fight for the right, our own right and the right of other Nigerians. If Abiola and Kingi Bear were being honored and recognized, we are the foot soldiers. We are the delegate that voted them into power. What, what about us? Why can we not be honored and be paid our salary and outstanding? Although they have asked us to go, but we are still alive. And so long as we are alive, we start to fight, not only for our own cause, but also for the cause of the nation. At any point, there is an occasion here that we need to put, make an input, we do. The host lends his voice to the forum's clamor for justice. If for any reason they have kept crying out that there are things, there are entitlements, there are benefits that were cut short because of the military intervention, of course, National Assembly to take the lead to ensure that what is right is done to the people. High point of the visit is their word of excellence on Fred Agbedi in appreciation of his tireless efforts in fighting their cause. The forum is hoping that Saka will soon come the way of its over 200 members still living in the interest of equity, fairness and justice. And this is Trust TV's news update coming up after the break. TCN alleges threats to Shiro the hydroelectric power dam. And more news when we return to stay tuned. It's time to jackpot for more fun. This season, there are loads of exciting content. Enjoy all the drama, intrigue, suspense, and romance in a wide range of telenovela series, Nollywood movies, Bollywood, kiddies program, and introducing our new kiddies channel, Booing. After five years of waiting, the Nigeria Premier Football League is finally back, live and exclusively on Star Times. <laughs> Enjoy more this season with our jackpot promo. Recharge two months on Classic or Super Bouquet and get 14 days free or recharge two months and get upgraded to a higher bouquet wow <laughs> recharge now and jackpot for more fun and stand a chance to win sundial tv and all the fantastic gifts offer runs till january 20 2024 terms and conditions apply star times entertain your family
welcome back and if you're just joining us this is the news update on trust tv here is a recap of the major stories vice president shatima visits victims of kaduna accidental bombing in naira scarcity unsettles residents in the fct as concerns grow Moving on now, the Academic Staff Union of Universities on Thursday said Nigeria is in deep crisis following the migration of academics from Nigeria to other countries. The union also called for more investment in the education system, as well as calling on budgeting agencies to separate the budget of the Tertiary Education Trust Fund from Nigeria's annual budget to enable effective implementation. As the president, Professor Emmanuel Osodoke made a call at the Tet Fund Alliance for Innovative Research Showcase and closing event which held on Thursday in Abuja. Osodoke, who spoke against the backdrop of suspicion that the national budgets may not enjoy 100% implementation, observed that strangely, for the first time, government decided to add Tet Fund's budget to the national budget. Osodoke decried the continuous patronage of foreign goods and services by Nigerians even when they can be locally sourced. The economic crisis in Nigeria has continued to generate public commentaries from residents of Benue State, and one of the debates has centered on the validity of otherwise of Nigeria's tertiary institutions, especially the university system, and its contributions to the nation's economy. Jimmy Adzande reports. With the growing number of graduates churned out of Nigerian universities on a yearly basis, residents have questioned the extent to which formal education has impacted the economic trajectory of Nigeria. We have people questioning whether universities or training institutions are doing enough or not. I think uh, the training institutions, the tertiary institutions are doing enough. The only thing is that they do not have places where they can operate. They can apply their skills. The introduction of entrepreneurship studies in the university curriculum was meant to encourage self-employment, as explained by some of the students. My experience is doing the APIs. Let me say, I thank God for everything. It was, it's such a great thing for the APIs because many of us use that as a time to go out of uh, class, class alone, going to the normal, uh, to the uh, entrepreneurial world, learning new things, learning about uh, having new experiences and there was a lot of finances involved but uh, i think it is worth it there is also the argument that lack of political willpower is not encouraging private sector initiatives government is not encouraging businesses you know you start up a small business and as you are starting you have so many group of persons coming up with uh, claiming uh, so many uh, tax rights over you and also some persons are incapacitated, you know, because of uh, financial resources, because for individuals to operate, they need some finances. We are operating or we are part of the international market now. So whatever we're putting out there should be something that has value. Presently, Nigeria exports crude oil. No value is added to it. As you can see, we don't, we've lost the refining capacity. So we can't earn in dollars. We need to start earning in dollars for this particular kind of inflation to go down. It is left to be seen how the economic aspect of the renewed hope agenda of President Bola Tinobu will address concerns around education and economic development. Jimmy Azande, Trust TV News, Makodi. The Shiroro region of the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, says bandits have taken over years threatened to invade and take over the Shiroro hydroelectricity power dam in Niger State. The Regional General Manager Transmission, Mewada Sarkin Bello, disclosed this while addressing journalists at the dam in Niger State. Abubakar Kote has more. The Shiroro region of Transmission Company of Nigeria covers Shiroro power station with transmission stations at Jeba, Gusapi, Kainji, as well as Kontogora to Yauri, KB State. The Regional General Manager, Mewada Sarkin Bello Paiko, said bandits had not allowed proper maintenance of transmission lines from Shiroro to Kaduna, Gogolada, as well as Shiro to take in alliance over the years. One of my staff was picked by these bandits. Uh, it takes a lot of effort for them to resolve it. Honestly, I think he spent almost three months with them. 
before he could be released. But the worst case we faced was when we had problem with our Shiroro Cardinal line. We sent our linesmen. They went there with securities to go and address that issue. Unfortunately, they were ambushed by these bandits. I think they killed about three police officers or two there about. Uh, but as God, we have it. All our staffs were saved. I think that is the worst incident we have ever faced. And honestly, because of that, we could not afford to risk sending our staffs on these lines again. Because whenever an issue come up, usually, in fact, we have to table this issue to our headquarters. The headquarters move in. The presidency send a military task force in which they are here with us constantly to safeguard the staffs. Because these people keep on threatening that they want to come in and take over this place. We have the marine police. They are running on the water. We have the DSS. We still have the El Abidoka. At least to deter them away from coming to take over this place. Because their aim is to destroy this dam. Paiko said vandalization of electrical facilities was also a challenge to stable electricity generation, transmission, and distribution of power to Nigerians. He said the transmission company of Nigeria had always taken proactive measures to ensure that the electricity was always transmitted to the final distributors at the right time. Abakar Akote, Trust TV News, Mena. And stakeholders in Nigeria's security sector have called for the decentralization of the nation's policy, policing structure to ensure better service delivery and enhance security in the country. And they made the call while speaking to Trust TV in Ibadan, the Oya state capital, on the need for effective security during the Yuletide season. The report. Security remains one of the major rights of every citizens of the country as this is spelled out in Section 14 of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as amended. With insecurity spreading across the country, security experts believe the country should decentralize its policing system for greater efficiency, vis-a-vis -vis the introduction of intelligence-driven approaches and legalizing the use of arms by registered local security operators. Then what we have in this country, having a centralized policing system, is an aberration. It means that this centralized system needs to be decentralized so that other levels of government, I mean the state, let's start from the subnational, which is the state, should have their own work, should have their own policing system. You look at this new trend of insecurity in the country, then you understand that to actually be able to cope with the current trend of insecurity in Nigeria, there's need for a new approach. And like we all know, across the world, the world is now going intelligence-driven, uh, uh, policing. Strong problem, strong approach. So there's nothing but if local security are equipped with uh, weapons so as to make them more functional. The special advisor on security to a your state governor, Sunday Udukoya, says government has begun registration of its public motorcyclists as a way of curbing criminal activities by operators, adding that government will continue to invest in the security sector of the state to endanger social economic development. So the government has invested so much on security. Just of recent, he had meetings with even rank and file in the police, even his, uh, a corporal constable down to the, 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 the commissioner. He had meetings with them. He asked them for their needs. He gave all the area commanders vehicle. And there's more effort now. He's still planning to get more for the divisions again. Uh, what you need crime is that when people are looking to meet their needs. And that's the key. In criminology, we understand that what people, what led people to crime is because they want to meet their needs. And I want to plead with people that's at all that please, despite all this end of the year, whenever you cannot achieve this, and if you have a life, there's a hope for a living daughter in their life. Please, be calm. God will do it for you. 
Special advisor to your state governor advised Nigerians to shun practices that are counterproductive as the year is winding down, called for patience and contentment for a safe and exciting festive season. And away from Nigeria, Sierra Leone police have summoned former President Enes Bai Koroma for questioning as part of their investigation into a failed coup attempt on the 26th of November. Information in a statement on Thursday, the information minister revealed. The minister, Channel Ba, said Koroma is invited to report to the headquarters of the Criminal Investigations Department in Freetown within 24 hours. Karoma, in a statement calling on the public to remain calm, said he would honor the invitation even as he stands ready to support the police investigations to the fullest. And gunmen attacked a military barracks, a prison and other locations in Sierra Leone last month, freeing about 2,200 inmates and killing more than 20 people in what the authorities said afterwards was an attempt to overthrow the government. The government said the failed coup was led mostly by the former president's bodyguards. Karoma condemned the attacks in the statement shortly after they happened. And so far, 71 people have been arrested in the context of the ongoing investigation, including 45 serving military officers, 7 serving police officers and 13 civilians. And in sports, Chiamaka Nadozie has made the final shortlist for the 2023 CAF Women's Goalkeeper of the Year Award. Nadozie was outstanding for Nigeria at the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup, co-hosted by Australia and New Zealand. The shortstopper also played a crucial role in her club. FC Paris made an appearance in the group stage of the UEFA Women's Champions League. South Africa and Dele Dalami and Morocco's Khadija El Minchi are the other goalies nominated for the award. In the Women's Young Player of the Year category, Deborah Bjordan will slug it out with comfort Yebo of Ghana and is Syrian El Chad of Morocco, as Nigeria is among the final three nominees in the Women's National Team of the Year category. And with that, we've come to the end of the news update on Trust TV. Do not forget to follow us across all the social media handles for more news, programs and documentaries. My name is Chiamaka Nendo. Thank you for watching.